Welcome to my channel. I'm going to walk you through the process of valuing four REITs and analyzing their ratios. The first REIT is Starwood, which has a portfolio of over $16 billion across commercial and residential properties. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $4.4 billion, so they're a mid-cap company. They're trading at $15.68 a share. And to get the shares outstanding, it's the market cap divided by stock price gives you the shares outstanding, $281 million. We're going to need this number later when we calculate the value of the company. Let's look at their financials. You can see in two years they had negative free cash flow, which means they're spending more cash than they're generating. They do have positive net income in all four years, which is good. And their revenue seems to be on an incline. It's almost at a billion dollars in 2019. Let's look at the capital structure. They have $9 billion of debt. They pay 5.6% interest on the debt. So that's their cost of debt. And the weight of debt is 66%, which means they have 34% equity. To get the cost of equity, we need the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. Their beta is 1.45, so the stock moves about one and a half times the market. So it's a little more volatile than the market. And to get the weighted average cost of capital, it's a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. And we get a value of the company of $2.9 billion. We divide that by 281 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 1051. They're trading at 1568. So they're trading at a 49% premium to sell according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street has. They have $13, so they're also saying the stock is overvalued. Let's see where the stock has been trading the past few years. So it looks like it was trading much higher before coronavirus and then dropped like a rock. And then it's come up a little bit, but it's still at a low point compared to its all-time high. Let's look at their financial ratios. 8.6 PE, that's really good. The median in the entire market is 15.1. Price of sales seems a little weak at 4.6. The median is 1.8, the average is 5.3. Good price to book of 0.9, the median is 2.4, the average in the entire market is 5.7. So PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. I like to see below 15, they're at 8.6, so investors are paying $8.60 for $1 of earnings. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. Calculate sales per share, that's revenue, over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 4.6. So investors are paying $4.60 for $1 of revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity, over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 0.9. So investors are paying $0.90 cents for $1 book value. Whenever you value REITs, you should look at price of stock over funds from operations per share. And I like to see below 15 for this ratio. They're at 10.2. So that means investors are paying $10 for $1 of funds from operations. They have a weak ROE of 11%. The median is 13%. The average is 8%. Interest coverage ratio is a little low at 1.9. The median in the entire market is 4.1. The average is 13.3 and they have a good dividend yield of 12.2%. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, they're 11%, so they don't provide a good value to their equity holders. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above 2.0, they're at 1.9, so they can cover their interest expense, but not by too much. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Abesco, MFA, TPG, Western Asset, and Exantis. And here's Starwood in the middle. And if Starwood has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they're in green, they're better than the average. So funds from operations per share, they're at 10.2, which is better than the average in the industry of 28. Invesco is doing really well at 1.7. They are worse than the average in price to earnings, price to sales, and price to book. But they are better than the average in ROE. They have the lowest amount of debt of all the companies and they're the highest in market cap at 4.4 billion. All the other companies in their industry are under 1 billion market cap. And they have the highest dividend yield of all the companies. They pay a hefty 12.2% dividends per year 
The other companies pay 9%, 7%, and 3%, and a couple of companies don't pay any dividends. The average in the industry is 8%. So to summarize, I value the company at a 49% premium. Simply Wall Street is also valuing them at a premium. The ratios look pretty good compared to their competitors. Some are a little weaker, but they do have the lowest amount of debt, the highest market cap, and the biggest dividend yield. The second read is Ceritage. This company has 180 wholly owned shopping centers and 28 joint venture shopping centers across 45 states and Puerto Rico. Let's get started with the model. They have a market cap of $831 million, so they're a small cap company. They're trading at just under $15 a share. They have positive free cash flow in three of the four years, which is good, but their net income is negative each year. So if they continuously operate at negative net income, they will go out of business, so they have to make a profit at some point. And their revenue seems to be decreasing every year, which isn't good. They have $1.6 billion of debt, and they pay about 6% interest on the debt. And they have 69% of debt in their capital structure. The other 31% is equity. And to get the cost of equity, we need the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. And their beta is 2.22. So it's a pretty volatile stock. It moves more than two times the market. To get the WAC, it's a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's the discount rate we're gonna apply to the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year at four, that's 250 million. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $337 million. We divide that by 56 million shares, and we get a calculated stock price of 603. They're trading at 15, so they're trading at 146% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Simply Wall Street does not have a value for this company, possibly because it's too small and unprofitable. Let's see where the stock has been trading at the past few years. So it looks like if you owned a stock before coronavirus, you might have lost a lot of money because it was trading over $50 a share. Now it's trading below $20 a share. It's lost quite a bit of value. Let's look at the financial ratios. Negative PE, a weak price of sales and a good price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. They have negative earnings, so they have negative PE. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. They're at 4.9, I like to see below 2.5. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They're at 1.1, I like to see below 3.5. Price of stock over funds from operations per share is negative because they have negative earnings, so we can't look at this number. Good current ratio, bad interest coverage ratio, bad ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. I like to see between 1.2 and 2, but 2.5 is fine. Negative ROE, since they have negative net income, so we can't look at this number. Negative interest coverage ratio, because they have negative EBIT. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Agree Realty, Federal Realty, Mace Rich, Realty Income, Rio Can, Tanger Outlets, Simon Property Group, and Washington Prime. All in the same industry as Seritage. And if Seritage has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they're in green, they're better than the average. So they are, of course, worse than the average in price of stock over funds from operations per share because they're negative. They have a negative PE, so we can't look at that. They are better than the average in price of sales and price to book. They have the highest current ratio, which is interesting because most companies are below one. They're at 2.5. They have negative ROE. They have higher than average debt and they're a small company at under 1 billion market cap. The average in the industry is 6.3 billion. The average dividend yield is 6.4%, but they don't pay a dividend. So to summarize, they're trading at a significant premium. They're not valued at simply Wall Street, so I can't even look at their comparison, and the ratios look pretty weak. The third read is True North. This company owns commercial properties in Canada, which include banks, insurance companies, breweries, and many more. Let's get started with the model. They have a market cap of $500 million, so they're a small cap company. They're trading at $585 a share. They have positive free cash flow every year, and it's growing, which is good to see. They have positive net income in most years. And their revenue is growing rapidly year to year. It grew 250% from 2016 to 2019. That's an amazing growth. Let's look at the capital structure. They have almost $800 million of debt. They pay 2.5% interest on the debt, and the weight of debt in the capital structure is 60%, which means they have 40% equity. 
To get the cost of equity, we need the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. And the beta is 1.36, so the stock is a little more volatile than the market, but it's not too bad. The WAC is 6.6%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. That's 488 million. We discounted those numbers back to today using a weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $700 million. We divide that by 85 million shares. We get a calculated stock price of 824. They're trading at 585, so they're trading at a 29% discount. So it's a buy according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're at 910, so they're a little higher than me. They're saying the stock is 36.5% undervalued. Let's see where the stock has been trading at the past few years. So it looks like it peaked around $8 before coronavirus and come down quite a bit. It looks like a great value. Let's look at the financial ratios. A weak PE, a weak price of sales, and a good price to book. So PE is stock price of earnings per share. I like to see below 15, they're at 21. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 4.7. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 0.9, so that's a really good ratio. Price over funds from operations per share is 10.45. I like to see below 15, so that's good. They have a really bad interest coverage ratio, bad ROE, but a good interest coverage ratio. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they can't even come close to covering the current liabilities, so they probably need to take on more debt. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, they're only at 5%. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above 2, they're at 2.8. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on City Office, Digital Realty, SL Green, and Vornado, all in the same industry as True North. And if True North has a number in green, they're better than the average. If they're in red, they're worse than the average. They're better than the average in price of stock over funds from operations per share. They're 10.4. The average is 11.4. They're better than the average in PE, price of sales, and price to book. Although they're worse than the average in current ratio, ROE, debt, and market cap. They're the smallest company. But in terms of dividend yield, they're paying the most in dividends, 10.15%. So if you're looking for a stock with high dividends, this is the stock. The other companies are paying lower and the average in the industry is 6.9%. So to summarize, they're trading at a 29% discount, they pay a great dividend, and their ratios look pretty good overall. The fourth read is RioCan. This company is the second largest read in Canada. It owns 289 properties. Most of those properties are malls and shopping centers. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $4.7 billion. So they're a mid-cap company, they're trading at $14.50 a share. Let's look at the financials. They look really good, positive and consistent free cash flow, also really good net income and revenue. Everything looks good in their financials. Let's look at the capital structure, $6.4 billion of debt. They pay 2.86% interest on their debt. So the weight of debt is 43%, the rest is equity, 57% equity. And to get the cost of equity, we need the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. And the beta is about one, so the stock moves with the market. The WAC is 6.8%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity, and that's a discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 4.8 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using a weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $5.2 billion. We divide that by 323 million shares. We get a calculated stock price of $16. They're trading at $14.53, so they're trading at a 10% discount. So it's a buy according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're at $18.50 a share, so they're saying the stock is also undervalued. Let's see where the stock has been trading at the past few years. So like most REITs, it's dropped off a cliff at coronavirus and it's at a pretty low point. So it looks like it could be a really good value. Let's look at the ratios. Great PE, a decent price to sales, and a great price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. I like to see below 15, they're at 6.1. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 3.5. 
Price to book is stock price over book value per share. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 0.6. They have a great price over funds for operations per share at 7.77. I like to see below 15. They have a bad current ratio, bad ROE, and a good interest coverage ratio. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they cannot cover their current liabilities, so they probably need to take on more debt. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, they're only at 9%. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above 2, they're at 3.8. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Agree Realty, Federal Realty, Macerich, Realty Income, Tanger, Siren Property, Seritage, and Washington Prime, all in the same industry as RioCan. And if Rio Can has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they're in green, they're better than the average. So they are worse than average in price over funds from operations per share. They're best in price to earnings of all the companies at 6.1. They have a better than average price to sales and price to book. Their current ratio is lower than average, lower than average ROE. They're doing much better in debt at 43% compared to the average of 62%. But they are low in market cap at 3.5 billion. The average is 6.3 billion. They pay the highest dividend. Their dividend yield is 9.6%. The average is 6.4%. So if you're looking for a stock with a high dividend, this is the stock. So to summarize, they're trading at a pretty good discount. They pay the highest dividend in their industry and their ratios look pretty good. So let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment. I reply to all comments. Subscribe if you want to see me value more companies. Thanks for watching.